It was this week, four years ago, that the then Howard government launched a federal intervention into the Northern Territory's remote Indigenous communities. The intervention was in response to the Little Children Are Sacred report outlining rivers of grog and abuse in remote Indigenous communities. The former Prime Minister John Howard claimed it a national emergency and implemented a raft of quickly drafted policies that were brought in under bipartisan support. Northern Territory MLA Marion Scrimger is one of the few politicians who spoke out against the intervention. Marion Scrimger joins us now. Marion Scrimger, welcome to the program. Thank you, Letitia. The intervention has never sat well with you. Four years on, how have your feelings changed? I've always had reservations, but I've also um, looked at some of the the initiatives and programs that have flowed in, into these communities. Um, when you look at, you know, the, the policing, the education, all of those programs that have gone into those communities, you, we didn't need an intervention to do that. They are, they are programs and resources that should have been available to those communities. The federal Labor government inherited the policy and modified it. They've, they say they've removed discriminatory elements of the intervention. But are there still discriminatory aspects? Look, I think that uh, certainly, Letitia, the smokescreen that's often run with the intervention, sure, the Racial Discrimination Act has been, you know, put back and, and uh, you know, applied. Uh, what isn't happening is that is the, the federal government's not actually complying with the Racial Discrimination Act. And there are several things that, that happen uh, in relation to Aboriginal communities that doesn't happen anywhere else in mainstream Australia, which still makes it discriminatory. So, you know, using income management, uh, you know, putting services into education, having more police has got nothing to do with uh, intervening in in individuals' lives. It, it's, you know, there's certainly, with the new round of discussions that uh, Minister Macklin needs to have, certainly, you know, there, there needs to be a serious look at uh, the legislation, which is uh, absolutely discriminatory because they wouldn't implement that legislation anywhere else. And nowhere in that legislation does it talk about protecting children, which is what uh, the Little Children Are Sacred report, you know, had outlined that there was, a, you know, some serious issues in, in some remote Aboriginal communities. What's been the impact of that level of discrimination on the ground in communities, particularly on individuals? Look, the, the impact, particularly on men, I've noticed when I've travelled around, you know, the, the morale and the, the impact on Aboriginal men has been quite... Um, quite a huge thing. I, I think that, you know, it, the, the blanket was thrown over. Sure, you, you've had a couple of bad individuals, but rather than targeting where the problem areas was, the blanket was thrown over and everyone was put into the same bucket. So that has certainly had some huge um, impacts on men where men have felt less um, able to, to, you know, individuals to participate in, in families and with jobs. The removal of GDP has, has, has certainly added to that, where, where people are just feeling, um, you know, and there, there's a sense of helplessness in, in a lot of those communities. Your strong stance against the intervention damaged your political career and no doubt took a personal toll. In hindsight, was it worthwhile or do you feel that you took yourself out of the game? Look, Letitia, I, I don't regret for one minute um, speaking out as I did. I think someone needed to say something. I, I think rather than agreeing uh, with... And, and it, look, it was easier to agree. And I felt that uh, I was a duly elected member of... Of, you know, from, from the electorate of Arafura, there was certainly a number of elements, like the, the compulsory leases. Um, you know, when, when you have a look at that legislation and you have a look at uh, the role of government business managers, when Aboriginal people have a meeting, they, they can't conduct those meetings without having um, a Commonwealth agent in those meetings. There are, there are a number of, of elements of the NTR which were absolutely, um, you know, just discriminatory. And, and should never have happened. No one disagreed that there were issues in terms of uh, child protection that had to be addressed, that family violence and alcohol and, you know, drug 
the, the issue of drugs was a major issue on the, on the ground in those communities. However, they were discussions that the, that the Labor government in the Northern Territory was having with the federal government, then John Howard and, and Mel Brough and, and that administration, for four to five years pre the intervention. So, you know, I mean, people were cynical. You know, I mean, I think that people thought, well, this will bring maybe the needed resources and financial support that we needed. Um, that didn't come rolling for a long time. And if you have a look on the ground in any of those communities, there is a mishmash of programs going on. Some areas it's worked, but in a lot of areas, uh, it certainly hasn't uh, produced any better outcomes than what was there pre-intervention. Could the Northern Territory Government have averted the intervention had it had a, a quicker response to the Little Children a Sacred Report or was the Howard government always coming after you? No, look, I, I think that, uh, that it was always going to be used as a political football and, and that's the unfortunate thing because I think that the, there could have been a lot of good. I, I think if that cooperation and working together, I think that there could have been a lot of gains. The Prime Minister Julia Gillard has said that the intervention has been successful, particularly in making children safer. Is that really the case? I think both Jenny Macklin and, and also the, the, our present Prime Minister, I think that what they need to do is stop listening to one or two commentators who reflect that view and actually get into a few more communities and sit down with people and listen to what people are saying. We all want to protect children. We need the housing, you know, the, the housing money needs to continue. We need support for homelands so that, you know, that the, the main community isn't going to have, you know, the overcrowding that is occurring in a lot of the communities because the federal government stops the, you know, stops the, the money that, that goes to homelands and outstations. There, there needs to be an honest, open dialogue in relation to this rather than people's views, whilst they don't agree with, with federal ministers, their voices are also silenced. Marion Scrimger, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Letitia.